the AYN Thor is one of those devices where every week you discover something new and think, surely this is the last thing it can do. Spoiler, it's not. In this video I'm going through 10 and a half tips and tricks that make the Thor smarter, cleaner and honestly a bit confusing from a legal standpoint. We are talking hidden Android tweaks, dual screen wizardry, Steam games and somehow the Netflix version of Red Dead Redemption running on this thing. I didn't believe it either, but here we are. Let's break the Thor responsibly. Number 1. Download and install Obtainium, the one and only app you will need to download and keep up to date everything that is not on the Google Play Store. You can see the link down below um, or just Google the Obtainium GitHub. You open that and on the right side you see releases. Click on releases. It will take you to all of the assets and we need the release APK, the standard one. Click on that and download or download again, as in my case. You can directly open and install from there. You don't need to run it right away because we will need the Obtainium emulation pack first. Again, the link is further down in the description. There you can go to assets again. You download the complete JSON for the dual screen handhelds. In case you have a dual screen handheld like the Iron Thor, and now this is when you can actually open Obtainium. Select the JSON we just downloaded. And voila, and you will see it has imported 32 apps or a list of 32 apps. Literally everything you need or might not need for your emulation desires. Uh, you see in my case it already shows me where I have updates or not. So this is one very very handy feature and if you click on the install icon there you see there is an update for seven apps. I will briefly show you how that works. You click on continue. In the example of GameHub Lite you need to select the appropriate version first. Same for Citra here. We're going to select the standard version and then Melon Dual DS do we take the fork on the standard one and that's it then it will do its things in the background the first time it will install an update it will need your permission so please do click that it has the permission to install apps and then you will see the various pop-ups of Azahar for example or Nether SX2 or any other app that you want to install pretty straightforward pretty easy and highly recommended. Number two, how do we get rid of the ugly white line on the right side for the in-app drawer without deleting the in-app drawer? I will show you. You swipe from the top to the bottom. You go to the right and again to the right. Here, if you press on it, you can deactivate it, but if you click exactly on the arrow, it will bring up the floating icon transparency. You go to zero, et voila, the in-app drawer is still there, but you got rid of the white line. Congratulations! Number three, the in-app settings. Sometimes a highly forgotten setting, I have to admit it took me a while, also in my case, to use it. As I've shown you earlier, you need to swipe from right to left to open the menu. You will see gamepad option for the specific game or app. You can choose the handle style, the R2, R2 mode for example. You can also customize your performance. For example, there will be some apps like, like GameHub where you want to have the performance mode active, whereas in other apps you use the normal mode. Um, the same is valid for your fan mode. Sometimes you want a quiet of profile for something that is not running as widely as other apps. So I will show you what happens now actually if we exit this app where we configured something, we open Azar, we open here from right to left and you see again uh, you have the global settings applied and if you go back to Game Up Light you have the in-app settings. Quite handy, I recommend you use that. 
Number four, yes, your Thor can also play Steam games. You know that from my previous videos or from other coverage, so I'm not going to bore you with the details here. I've linked um, the two previous videos in the description below for the setup and how you get this going. It's pretty straightforward. You either need Game Up, Game Up Lite, um, if you want to have it a bit more complicated, but maybe more performant. There is also bin later, obviously. Um, this is going to be just fine for your indie titles, some AA titles, obviously not for AAA, but uh, you know, still plenty of games um, accessible and uh, some pretty good options out there. I'm just going to show you what I have on my I'm Thor right now, it's Circuit Superstars for example, Tape to Tape, Sonic Mania, Pro Force, New Star GP, so you get the drill here, I mostly have indie titles also because of the limited internal space, but of course if you want to have uh, games like Fallout etc, they also do work. And number five is about making everything pretty and integrating your Steam library or the specific games into your emulation station desktop edition setup. I have links down my video where I show you each and every step on how to get this done. There will be some manual work to get this going, but look at the results here. You have it literally like any other game integrated in ESTE with the cover art, with the nice intro videos or gameplay videos. I really love that setup. ESTE is really my favorite um, full dual screen support plus the Steam integration. Now I think this is just great and a good option for the Einthor. We are at number six using the second screen to magnify the content of your top screen which is really helpful for maps etc. For this open a game on your top screen, go into the settings and search for magnify. It will show you the option right away which you can enter. Then first thing you want to do is enable the magnification shortcut as you see it at the top screen. Then you go into the type of magnification you select the second option here, nothing else you need to change, so you can back out. And then you can press the top icon now and basically move to the part of the screen where you want the magnification or magnifier, I guess, to work. And there it is, you have the GTA map now, basically copy pasted to your bottom screen. I think this is a nice option, works well for some games, for others maybe it's less ideal if it's not a static map, but it's just a good option to have. Number seven, using the focus mode, meaning making sure that you can use both screens, but the control, the physical controls are assigned to the top screen. You see here, all works well while you use the top screen, but as soon as you scroll, your controls are usually then defaulted to the bottom screen. That's not ideal if you have a guide up and running, but if you press the iron button, you go to the top left setting here and then you set it to top screen or main screen. Let's see what happens now. You can control your character on the top screen, control the bottom screen with your gestures and your controls are still assigned to the top screen. I think this is a nice option. Uh, an approach in case you want to have your guides um, on the bottom screen or anything else. It will always default the physical controls to the top screen. So this is a rather important one for me. Uh, I really struggled at the beginning. And number eight, let's pin the keyboard to the bottom screen if you like that. For me, this is a really handy feature. Um, when the keyboard is open, top right is the pin icon. You select the second option here. And the next time you will open your keyboard, voila, it will open on the bottom screen. Really handy, uh, not a must have, but I like this option. And number nine, let's talk about Netflix games and specifically Red Dead Redemption. 
Um, as you know, Netflix, plenty of games that are included in your subscription that you can download from the Google Play Store. Red Dead Redemption is one of them, but as you have seen here, unfortunately you can't download it. It's a, let's call it a verification issue, a Google Play issue with respect to how the Iron Thor is certified, I guess. So that doesn't work. Um, in contrast, plenty of other titles like Street Fighter, uh, Football Manager, Sonic Media, etc. do work. Um, your mileage may vary in terms of whether you like these games or not, uh, but I think it's good to have it as an option and since you're anyhow paying for it because you are a Netflix subscriber, it really makes sense to go into the Play Store, you search for the Netflix as a developer and there you have this long list where you can scroll through and most of them do actually work as i said tnmt Stratus revenge is a very nice title i really enjoyed playing for example on the switch so please take your time go through that i think there are some some nice free to play options here directly offered by netflix but with respect to Red Dead Redemption, there is a way to deal with that. You can go to a website called APK Vision and download one of the files I'm showing you here. There is the standard version, there is a unlocked version where you can change the graphical settings. Um, it's pretty straightforward in terms of approach. You see here in the display settings you can even select the 60 FPS mode and it runs just great with that. Um, literally only two steps website apks vision then you open the file with a uh, i recommend z archiver which can directly sort of extract it and install it for you really really easy to handle that and we are at number 10 getting rid of the bottom gesture line if that is something that bothers you you can do that directly in the Android settings it's uh, actually a standard Android thing not really Iron Thor specific so you go into settings from there to the system you click on gestures the first option here is the navigation gesture navigation you click on the icon on the right here and this is where you can just deselect the home bar. It will still keep the functionality, but you get rid of that white line. Okay, ten and a half. What to do about the shitty, almost shitty sound quality of the Iron Thor? Joey from Joey's Retro Handhelds did a great video on this. That's why it's only half a tip because I linking to his video he did a great work on describing the steps and how to change the profiles etc so please do follow that and i think it's really worth it uh, and obviously also like his video and subscribe now we come to an end uh, in terms of my tips and tricks here if you like my video would be grateful if you if you like and subscribe my channel see you the next time bye bye from disco disco gaming